The biggest long-term follow-up study of prostate cancer screening was just published in the New England Journal of Medicine and I wanted to share the findings because I think it's really interesting. Um, welcome back to the hospital at night. It's um, 20 past 10 or so in the evening, positively early for one of my videos. Uh, I did promise to try and make some more of these impromptu vids so that you don't make the customary, oh Rohan remembered his password comments when I post once a year. Now I've talked a fair bit about screening um, and I think people are often surprised to hear the science because it runs contrary to the popular message, especially common in places like the US, that all screening is good and saves lives. The European Study of Prostate Cancer Screening, or ERSPC, has published its 23-year follow-up. It studied 160,000 men between the ages of 55 to 70 in eight European countries, and it randomised them to either receive prostate cancer screening with a conventional PSA blood test, which you may have heard of, something that's promoted um, by people like functional medicine doctors whose mantra is test, 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 uh, or they were randomised to not have any screening. And the headline that you might have read in the last week is prostate cancer mortality cut by 13%, which sounds pretty good. But when you actually look at the actual risk reduction rather than the relative risk reduction, after 23 years, prostate cancer mortality in the screening group was 1.4% versus 1.6% in the non-screening group. The number needed to prevent a death was 456, i.e. 455 men who undergo screening do not derive any benefit. Now, of course, detection rate in the screening group is higher which is the exact phenomenon that I went into detail uh, a few years ago in a video called The Epidemic of Fake Disease, which leads people like uh, Rudy Giuliani, who I mentioned there, um, to criticise socialised medicine in Europe because PSA is used more commonly in the US and more diagnoses of prostate cancer are made and it's picked up earlier, but the end result is no different. And I talk about something called lead time bias there too, which is a, a useful concept to understand. So do check that out if you want some more detail. And yet, even though these um, concepts are known, I just ventured into the cesspool of X to see what doctors were saying. And amazingly, some who simply don't understand science, were writing posts um, using ChatGPT, believe it or not, saying prostate screening saves lives because they were, I think, unable to interpret the difference between prostate cancer-specific mortality and overall mortality. Even that 0.2% of actual risk reduction effectively disappears because the mortality in both groups was 49%, which means half the patients died during the time. Um, but hey, you know, posting hashtag prostate screening saves lives feels good, doesn't it? Sorry, for clarity, what I meant there is 49% uh, mortality in both groups from other causes. So why is this important? Because you often hear how common prostate cancer is, and it, and it is common. And especially this month, I'll get rid of the beard soon and do Movember, where we're raising awareness of male cancer, it is important to think about it, but death from prostate cancer is not common. So there's an expression in medicine that we say men often die with prostate cancer, but not from post prostate cancer. In post-mortem studies, it's uh, often detected as a bystander, but not the cause of death. And that's because it tends to be a slow-growing cancer. Um, and yet there are occasional fast-growing aggressive versions and that's, those are the ones you want to catch, but PSAs cannot tell you which is which. So I'm not saying prostate cancer is not a problem and you should ignore it, but that PSA screening is a poor strategy. Secondly, if I have perhaps one message to anyone who watches my videos, it's warning against the dangers of over medicalization. I'm a doctor who does not want your business. I do not want to sell you anything. I do not want to see you. I want you to lead healthy lives away from my profession I always smile when I meet a patient in their 70s or 80s who say they have, haven't seen a doctor since they were a boy or since they were a young woman and gave birth. And I think of the 455 men who derived no benefit, who were medicalized to save one life over 23 years. They might choose not to undergo screening if they were presented with these findings up front. However, some may still choose to go for it, and that perhaps that's you. Shared decision-making with your doctor uh, for you as an individual is important and central. Blanket population screening is not. There are plenty of other things to discuss further, like the Wilson and Jungner screening criteria or 
further analysis of the paper, but I'm trying to keep this short. And more than anything, I would urge people, particularly those with questions, to have a chat to their doctor in real life, especially men in this age group. But I highlight uh, this because I think it's a great example of science and, and also to challenge the idea that I see promoted all over the internet that knowledge is power and you should extensively test yourself for everything. Some things, sure, I check my cholesterol, I check my blood pressure, things that are backed by evidence and that I can modify. But I certainly do not subscribe to the trend of selling hundreds of tests, sending off hundreds of tests um, as something will come back abnormal and then you are left with the worry. I often get comments that mischaracterize my statements as saying that, you you know, I'm, I'm saying you should just let Jesus take the wheel and fate decide, but that's the exact opposite of my mission. I'm saying concentrate on what actually affects your health. Common sense things, you know, diet, exercise, all that stuff, not the excessive testing, certainly not things like supplements and whatever. These critical commenters have even accused me of things like trying to cause deaths or, uh, by criticizing ineffective screening, saying I'm gonna cause cancer. Um, but while they can only bring vibes and the belief that it works, and that's an understandable belief, the evidence says otherwise, with a very few exceptions. Um, and I thought this was a, a laudable study. I thought it was worth sharing. And, you know, there are so many things that can put your PSA up that are not cancer. If I check mine, it's a little bit up. I'll no longer be a person going about my day. I'll become a patient. I'll be locked into the system, bound for further tests. Um, years of follow-up. Some people have followed up for years and years because of uh, a raised PSA. It can lead to more tests. It can lead to e even things like a biopsy. People often present improved cancer statistics as evidence that screening works. But in reality, the vast majority of our recent progress has not been in picking up more cancer, but it's by developing far better treatment for advanced cancers. And I think that is a real success story.